Ever wondered what it's really like to live the fast-paced, thrilling, and challenging life of a professional dancer in Los Angeles? Well, this is me, and I lived my life as a professional dancer for 10 years and quit right as my career was beginning to actually take off. Which may seem like a pretty stupid move, but I think that you will understand by the end of this video. Because in today's video, I'll be going back to my old lifestyle and showing you exactly what it looks like to live as a professional dancer in Los Angeles, California. As I spell all the tea on my daily calorie and carb intake, the impossible journey of getting a US artist work visa, the challenge with weight training and muscle development with this amount of cardio, the financial earnings of a dancer, and well, why I personally made the choice to no longer pursue this as my career. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little bit nervous about this week. <laughs> Now, the reason for that is because a typical day in the life of a dancer is going to vary, but it could look something like this. Wake up typically happens a little later in the day, and then there's a potential chill start to the morning. Oh my Followed God. by a workout. And then depending on whether or not this dancer is on a job at the moment, you may tape some self-tape auditions. Hi, my name is Pernilla Zoe. I'm from Denmark, a small town called Aarhus. I came here for the first time two and a half years ago, and it was incredible for me to see how many dancers from all over the world came together and had this joy to Oh, what the, go to an actual casting or audition, come up with and shoot some choreo, and well then, take some dance classes, which usually run a little bit later, hence the later start to the day. Or if you're on a job, your day may require rehearsals starting anywhere from around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and lasting from two to eight hours. It may require traveling if your performance is out of town, or maybe a full 12-hour music video or commercial shoot or show starting anywhere between 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. At, at the time, I would literally dance minimum five hours a day. And if I were to take one rest day where I would not dance, I would be so hard on myself. Dancers are freaking badass. No joke, ramen is what I would have for breakfast every morning for when I first came to LA. I actually had no clue of the difference between a carb and a protein. However, I had like three different eating stages in my dance career because I had my first dance job when I was 14. And in Denmark, I ate a certain way when I came to LA. At first I ate a certain way. And then there was a time when I decided to get in badass shape and I took a personal trainer certificate and actually learned to understand the basics of nutrition, which made me gain some physical results. Oh my God, this is such a big bowl, but this is what I would eat for breakfast. At like 11 a.m. because my sleep schedule was completely different back then. I've been trying to see if I could get up a little bit later, but my body just wants to get up very dirty. I think it also has to do with the fact that I keep falling asleep at 8. Ouch, 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 that's hot. I actually can't believe how much cardio and exercising I was doing at the time without eating any protein. But you do need carbs when you do that amount of cardio. So at least I got my carbs in. Okay, I understand why I would do this. Not just because every package cost 25 cent. It's so good. Which I'll get back to why these 25 cent ramen noodles was a staple for both my broke self and dance friends as we lived in bunk beds and on air mattresses before I was able to get my artist visa to work in the States. But I have some dance classes that I gotta get to today. Before that, I gotta get in my gym session, find some new dance heels, make my typical mm. dance lunch. So we gotta get moving. So Alessandra is literally out there doing a self tape right now. Can you hear the music? The clapping. You look so pretty. Thank what, you. What are you doing? I'm doing a self tape for a commercial right now. Do you do a lot of those for dance jobs? Self tapes? Yeah. Yes. Like I've had three this week already. So oh, she's a dancer. Oh. She's killing it. Oh. <laughs> little creatine and tape. Now before I go to the gym, something that I would have every day. I would eat lollipops and candy all day long. And since I'm a dancer this week, I thought sparkly. And now to poker. Many people would think that as a dancer, you wouldn't need to strength train, but what I dance is hip hop, and that's basically just pure cardio. When you look at the top of the top pro dancers in the world, I would say most of them also have some sort of strength training routine on top of their dancing. But we'll get back to why this weight training can be pretty challenging as a dancer. I'm destroying myself. Maybe the worst thing that I can do to myself because this body has got a full week of dancing, and dancing is no joke. So, gym sesh complete, legs are jelly, Cornell is excited. I did have protein bars once I got a little bit more fitness knowledge as a dancer. Today we're taking first a hip hop class and then a heels class. And last time I took heels, this happened. I was so excited to go take a dance heels class tonight in the middle of the class. So, we 
gotta really quickly run and see if we can find some new dance heels. I'm in Macy's right now and I really don't like these shoes, but also- Can you tell I spilled on my sock? It's like when you're dancing, it needs to be so tight around your wrist here. So I need some that are able to be tightened and these are the only ones I have. And otherwise I won't be able to do heels class today. So I'm gonna have to buy them. Figure out how to make them look a little better because this is very pointy for me, but whatever. I'm gonna have to do it. was between a carb and a protein at the time. Yes, this was actually the amount of pasta I would eat. I would bring it with me to dance class and then I would eat it throughout the day. I, for some reason, managed to do a good job putting in some protein in my pasta in the form of tuna because a can of tuna was $1, a package of pasta, one dollar and then i would put in mayo and mix that around if i was lucky the place that i lived at would have some spices in the cupboard and i'll put that on i'm actually kind of excited to taste this because it's been a while <laughs> mm, wow and well i've got a lot more calories to be consumed today because we're gonna go and by the end of the day, you'll see the extreme amount of calories I burned. Because Alessandra and I went to our friends Shane and Tia's class at the Playground LA, and the vibes in these classes were on another level. And even though it was less advanced choreography than other classes, I was having an absolute blast. Like I mentioned, if a dancer isn't on a job, taking dance classes is a must to improve performance and skills for when that audition or job opportunity comes around, and also a way that many dancers get to get in front of choreographers that potentially could hire them in the future. We have a little break between the two classes, and this is giving me flashback. Oh, oh that was perfect. Good. Thank you for the lights. Thank you for the lighting. Snack break. These are delicious. So delicious. Not actually, like it's gym. Mm. Giving us fuels for the heels. A lot of dancers also take dance classes to get footage for their social media, which basically in today's dance world is a place seen as your resume that choreographers and directors go to check out to see if you potentially could be the right fit for a job that they're hiring for at the moment. Oh my God, that was like the wildest, bestest energy. If you've never gone to a hip hop beginner class, you gotta go. And if you're ever in Los Angeles, you gotta go to playgrounds. Cause like, oh, it's a vibe. I go here often with my apples. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Have, yeah. Have a good night. Have a good night. The guy in the store said I look like an apple. He doesn't even know my love for apples. This is the biggest compliment. I'm so happy. I said it, I thought about it. She does look like an apple. Does I look like an apple. Oh my god, I'm so naked in the middle of the street. To give you a little context about my apple consumption, this was actually my fifth apple of today. Something else that I would do that is absolutely wild. I love apples so much and when I do a lot of cardio I get this like sugar craving but also what I did not know at the time is that it upsets my belly at the time every day around like 5 p.m. after having consumed like five apples at that point my stomach would start to expand just become one big balloon and I did not know at the time that it's because my body is so sensitive to the sugar that's in the apple so it was no bueno for me I still eat a few apples a day but like everything in moderation you know? and since we're talking about apples let's talk about my apple watch which shows me exactly how many calories I burned on a dance day like today. I burned over 1500 active calories today on my Apple Watch and plus my basic metabolic wait. <laughs> Plus my resting metabolic rate, it's 3,000 calories. I was thinking like I, I must have at least eaten 3,000 calories every day back in the day. And this just shows that that must have been very accurate. This is Hollywood. That's what they say. Come to Hollywood. Oh, I didn't even see that. I was like wanting to zoom in on the light. That's so funny. For dinner, I would have oatmeal with raw milk and regular sugar. And also more ramen. Now for the payment. Being a dancer making Dancers Alliance rates, you'll be making $450 for an eight hour rehearsal day and $925 for, for a shoot day. But that is not always the case. The worst thing about being a dancer, it's the behind the scenes. Okay. Sometimes they try to lowball you with the pay. You're not treated the way you would want to be treated. So that's why we have to aim higher. Being a dancer is one of those jobs where your lifestyle is very varied and dancers may be going for months at a time with having zero income come zero jobs coming their way and, and that's also why a majority of dancers have side hustles that pay their bills such as being a dance teacher which is something that i did for 10 years or pick up a job at starbucks or someday even as my friends who are during this 
this week had a little 2024 vision board creation night with going to car graphing or directing or becoming a yoga teacher or starting a lash and eyebrow business on the side or developing programs to sell online to navigate this unpredictable world of being a dancer. But then sometimes also suddenly have some crazy cool opportunity show up. That definitely happened for me when I was living as a dancer, having months where nothing really happened and then suddenly getting the opportunity to move to China for four months, working for China's biggest artists, performing in front of millions of people, or getting flown to Boston to work with New Balance, or the opportunity to go to Miami to work with Justin Bieber's choreographer for the South American Music Award. Being in famous people's music videos or co-choreographing and dancing at the iHeartRadio Music Festival. And all of these incredible opportunities were showing up for me right as I decided to focus more on content creation. Hey guys, welcome to day one of my seven day app challenge. And later on day two, I'll get into a little bit more detail as to why that is. I just cleaned my room and now I'm editing my podcast episode. I'm getting a little bit tired. I woke up at 4.30 this morning, which is a little bit later than normal, but I am feeling a little tired. My body's also tired, so I'm not feeling super excited to take dance class today, but I'm of course gonna do it. That's how I always was back in the day when I was a dancer. It's like, you just do it. You don't even question it. But now because I'm out of the flow of taking dance classes i'm questioning it but because i've committed to this challenge obviously i'm not i do just want to be transparent with you also the podcast episode i filmed today was all about challenge yourself Bro. today i'm taking my friend julian's class who i've also known um, since i don't know for the last seven years being in la and it's gonna be fun i don't know if you can tell but i'm like hyping myself up because that's the thing. You can hype yourself up if you don't feel like doing something. Get your butt there. You're gonna have a good time. Come on, Pranella. Come on. Let's go. Julian, what is it like being a professional dancer in LA? You meet amazing people. Boom. Especially because I did Rich Fam, and Rich Fam is an overall community of people who have like minded, no racism, no sexism, just in. And we like to bring each other together, give back. Who you are is about being a good human being overall. Something I would get when I was treating myself with the apple was Diet Coke. She still loves a Diet Coke. This looks exactly like what my car looked like back in the day. I've been eating so many protein bars. This is once I started making a little bit of money doing dancing because then I was like, oh my God, I just need a snack, protein bar, it is. I'm really loving these habits. Mm. However, a shift happened in my dancer's diet. One Christmas that I was spending in Australia with my dad, I decided, you know what, when I come back, I'm gonna get my butt in shape. And what I did was I studied Victoria's Secret model because I thought they look fit. They must know what's up, what to do. I also wanted to be a fitness model. And so I started to learn how to count calories. I thought because I had seen that Victoria's Secret models ate 1200 calories a day, that that was what I was supposed to do. And I did that while I was dancing a lot. And so that was not a healthy way to go about it. However, I was still not very financially stable. And so I found the cheapest vegetables that there were and that was habit i would eat so much cabbage i also started incorporating eggs to get some protein and leaner meats and occasionally other vegetables like broccoli i slowly started to develop this new way of eating that has over the last five years six years that has gone to where i am and eating the way that i do today that makes me feel so bad I'm about to go see someone who's played the biggest part in my evolution in the sense that she's been such an inspiration for me whenever I felt low. But for that, I just want to say that I saw a quote yesterday, which is very much something that I can relate to. Dr. Caroline Leaf, she says, it's okay for your dreams and goals to change. This doesn't mean you fail. And I could just really relate to this because I used to want to be a professional dancer. And then once I started doing it, I realized that it wasn't what I wanted, at least when I started started doing content creation and creating my own videos, I realized that I no longer wanted to pursue that dream. And I remember it being such a hard thing for me to accept for so long, especially because I was afraid of judgment from my family and from my friends, because I'd always wanted to do that. Suddenly I wanted to do something else more. And I felt a little bit like a failure, like Dr. Caroline Leaf shares in her post. But the way that I got over it was like just being honest with myself as to why would I continue to pursue that goal? over pursuing the goals that I'm pursuing today. And that really would be to prove to other people that I could do it and that I wasn't a quitter, I didn't give up. But when I was really 
quiet and honest with myself like that's not what excited me anymore and just these past two days of taking these dance classes i am just assured in the fact that i made the right decision like i don't want to go back to pursuing that as a career and i still love dancing it has nothing to do with that but what i do on a daily basis nothing excites me more than that so in case you once wanted something, this is just your little reminder that it's okay that as you evolve, so do your dreams. And you should never continue doing something just because you want to please other people. We gotta go. On this night, I went with my friend Sonia to see Gabby Bernstein speak, who's actually played a massive role in me allowing my dreams and goals to evolve. And we'll get back to exactly what happened later in the video. Last night's event was absolutely crazy. Gabby Bernstein just boosts absolute self-esteem and confidence standing on that stage and that is something I need and want to embody because the way that she inspires because of how worthy she knows she is, I believe that when it comes from like an actual love for yourself and not an ego thing, you know, like wanting to prove that you're better than someone else, but actually from like, I know that I am worthy. I know how much I have to offer and value other people. Like when it comes from a place like that, it is so inspiring. And so I have stepped back into my power. It's up to me and I'm making it happen. But just like your success is up to you and you can make that happen as well so the thing is when it comes to weight training and combining that with a lot of cardio is because when you do cardio you're kind of making your body tired so then when it comes to doing weight training because your muscles haven't had those full recovery days it's a little bit harder to go as heavy or for me at least it is it's the first time i'm doing it with this much weight since coming back because this girl got weak over the holidays i only did four i was supposed to do five we'll get there Something that I would do back in the day before going into a dance class or doing something dance related where I had to perform is I would use this alter ego effect, which you can read this book about it, which is phenomenal. It's basically where you enter into this alter ego identity and then you act, feel, perform, flow as if you were that identity. And it's been so powerful for me. You may have actually heard of Beyonce's alter ego, which is Sasha Fierce. And funnily enough, today's combo was actually to partition by Beyonce. And I really wish that there was no such thing as copyright because this song it hyped me up so good i can really tell that my hiccup game has gotten so much worse because i don't go to class anymore really like whenever i do i've been filming it on this youtube channel so that's pretty much when i've done it and like you learn so much choreography in one hour and it's wild i used to be so good at it and now we gotta get back into it but oh my god how oh, i'm about to go have a home cooked meal a lot of oh, different options. Oh my god! Now you can see us. Beautiful. No, I can't. She's in the mountains. Yeah, yeah, she's out. I'm on the. I'm like skiing. What? <laughs> really? There's, there, oh my god! <laughs> it's like it's a. I'm on Greenland or something. There's <laughs> snow everywhere. I put her in the mountains. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you really getting into this. I know that in like two months from now, this is going to be our new norm, but this technology is wild. I've been chicken many times in my life. I do not understand how someone can make it this moist. But today I spied on the cook and I think that he put soy sauce, salt, maple syrup was in it, butter, onion powder, and garlic powder. Give it a try. I'm thinking that before we get to the absolute craziness that happened to go down on day four of this challenge, we just take a quick 60 second break to chat about the impossible journey of me getting my US work visa. Because as you may be aware, I grew up in Denmark, but I visited the US for the first time in 2012 when my hip hop crew and I went to the world championships in Las Vegas, which was the first time in my life I experienced eating sushi every day for breakfast because there was this buffet at this hotel that we were staying at where you could choose sushi any time of the day. And that was when my session began. That was a little sidetrack, but back to the story. After the trip, I went back to Denmark, completed my high school education, took a dance education in Copenhagen, and when I was done with that, I decided at 19 years old to travel to Los Angeles, California for six months to see what that would be like. I then spent the next two years of my life on my tight savings, figuring out a way how I could get an artist visa so that I could stay in the US and dance full time because I just fell in love with this place. And despite all of Los Angeles lawyers telling me that with the resume I had, that would simply be impossible. I found a way because I always believe that where there is a will, there is a will. 
and I asked every single human and their mother to see if someone wanted to hire me as a dancer so that I could build up my resume. And after like months of rejections and no's and no's and no's and no's, don't ever take a no for an answer because there's always that one yes waiting for you if you feel in your soul that there's something you wanna do in your life. Just keep going. However, one of the choreographers that I was working with at a time had a connection that then got me connected with an agency in China. And that agency hired me and my friend to go to China and work for multiple artists for their music videos, live shows, TV shows. And it was a crazy experience. And that's when I really, for the first time, got to live that full-time professional dance life. However, after China, I go back into LA, go to multiple auditions to get an agent, get recommendation letters. I book a little tour for an artist in the US, get everything in order to apply for my visa. I apply for the visa, I get the Visa. And when I say that getting a US visa was hard, like it was probably one of the hardest things I had done in my life at that time. Because the truth is that when I first came to the US, I wasn't a very good dancer, but I trained my butt off. And after a few years, I got really good. And if I had stuck to it with my work ethic, I know that I would have become great. But I just little by little started to lose the passion that I used to have for it as my passion for something else grew bigger than anything I'd ever experienced. I just walked up into my gym and I don't know what What's going on? It was packed and people were in here doing crazy stuff. I mean, do you see this? I love it. These are my kind of people. During these final days of this challenge, I was enjoying these dance classes, but I also must say I was excited for it to be done. I used to have so much fire about dancing and I can feel that I don't have that anymore. And I really believe that with anything, it comes down to what's our why. Like if our why is strong enough, we're gonna do anything it takes to improve, to get to that the next place that we wanna get to. And I improved so much when I came here and was dancing like five hours a day. I really improved a lot during that time. And now I feel that my fire isn't there anymore because my why isn't there. I'm literally just there to like have fun, enjoy my time. Of course I wanna do well. I remember after having read Gabby Bernstein's book, The Universe Has Your Back, me walking on the streets of LA telling my friend that I have this feeling that I am meant to spend my life on helping other people become happier. And at the time, I didn't know how that was gonna be. I didn't have enough life experience to help others because I hadn't helped myself yet. Little by little, as I went more into self-development and I got into shape and it completely transformed my life and I started creating content, the passion and the drive that I previously had had when it came to dance suddenly had all gone to me creating this content. It gave me so much fire and so much life. Like dance used to. Oh my God, it just exploded. What in the world? Has that ever happened to you? However, we're adding a. During the final days, my body was just a tad challenged with the amount of cardio added onto my regular workout routine and my calories were in a surplus because I just feel terrible the amount of hunger, which is also why cardio isn't always the solution to weight loss for anyone out there who's trying to do that. And dance started to become something that I did because I felt like I had to, because I'd moved to LA to dance, pursue dance. And I realized really that what dance gave me was validation because I was good at it. And whenever I was dancing, then my family, the people in my surroundings would tell me that I was good at it. And so I kept doing it because I felt like I had to and to get that validation. But really my drive, my passion was in creating content, doing what I do today. I remember so clearly when I first came to LA and wanted to take classes at Millennium Dance Complex, I was so nervous and I was just feeling so much less than because I was a worse dancer than the other people, which makes absolutely no sense because our skill level within something doesn't determine our worth, but that's how I felt. And so I had to really start practicing this, believing in myself, reading self-development books and just like practicing the alter ego effect of like, you are enough, you can do this, you're a badass, like embodying incredible dance and acting as if I already was an incredible dancer because oh my god this girl she did not believe in herself but with practice we can learn to doing something for fun and doing something for work that's two very different things I realized that the passion I once had had for it when it was for fun I no longer had and when I found this passion for content creation for self-development and bettering my life and sharing and documenting that with other people I started to question the direction that I wanted to go in my life and not even one percent of dancers make it 
to the world tours. And not even 1% of people who try out YouTube make it their profession. So both of those are hard, right, to achieve. And I know that when I set my mind to something, I commit and I go full out and I make it happen. And it showed within how much I grew as, as a dancer in the years that I really did pursue it. Like I literally stopped right at the peak. And I know that if I'd continued, I would have made it because I wouldn't have stopped until I made it. But there needs to be a strong passion, a strong why for you to do something like that right like you have to put your everything into it and I did that with dance for so many years and I've taken everything that I've learned as a dancer because it's a creative art form I feel like creating YouTube videos is another form of art another form of creation and the love and the joy and the creativity and excitement I felt when I was a kid making up these dances that's what I feel today when I make these YouTube videos and both YouTube and dance are things that take up a lot of energy and when I realized that I continued pursuing dancing as a career because I wanted the external validation and the external success acknowledgement and my heart really was telling me that what I deep down wanted was to spend my life evolving, growing, digging deep into personal development and growing as a human both mentally and physically and documenting my process and sharing that with others because whenever other people had done that and that's when my life literally had changed that's when I realized like, I have to go for this dream and that doesn't mean that this entire other journey was wasted because it was all part of my journey it's made me who I am and I'm really 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 grateful today that I did this because I feel so happy and the only thing that matters in life that's my belief is that we do the thing that makes us happy and that we don't live for other people that we do the thing that we want regardless of how other people are going to because of that right and so I quit and now I sometimes still do it for fun but this week just really reassured me that I did the right thing because I wake up right now every single morning and I feel the most amount of gratitude for the life that I get to live waking up and getting to do what I love every single day is such a massive blessing and it has taken me years of not getting anything in return from my input my hard work now that hard work that I've been putting in for years is starting to pay off and hopefully I'm helping some individuals on that journey and I hope that this whole dance video gave you something whether that was just a little bit entertainment or knowledge about the dance industry or that maybe it gave you the bravery that you needed to take the challenging route or direction that you know deep down it's gonna make you feel like you're happiest in your life. Even though this week has reminded me that I do not miss doing dancing full time, I realize that I do want to do more commercial work for commercial. And so I already have a dance agent and a print agent as well as a manager for social media. But I yeah. asked one of my friends who does a lot of commercial work what managers and agents that she would recommend and I reached out to them and I've already gotten a few meetings set up. So today I'm gonna do some meetings and I'm sitting on the balcony, which may not be the most professional, but the sun is shining and this girl, she loves the sun. So I think I may have just got the new manager. Let's go! I'll sometimes catch myself being like, why isn't things happening right now? Like, what's going on? And then I'm like, Pernilla, make it happen. Remember who it is that you are. And then I take massive action, as in like, if I want to get one thing, I would put out 20, 30 emails to get at least one reply, because I think that whenever we feel stuck, whenever we want something new in life, we gotta take massive action. Also, I just started a new challenge, one of my 30-day challenges, and for that challenge, which will be out, in a little bit, I'm reading 10x is easier than 2x. Stay tuned for that challenge because I have a feeling that massive changes are about to happen. Go down.